you know, Mike, those are great points, uh, you know, about the kids and stuff and, and the defense, you know, kind of trying to throw him under the bus for the, the, the pet cemetery. Right. Um, but I think there may be another consideration we should think about, you know, it sounded like he was trying to expand that off of the property. Right. And so it's always, uh, remember the old, you know, sod, some other dude. Yeah. Right? That's another, another acronym team. Okay. That's S O D sod, some other dude. It, it sounded like a sod play, right? Like uh, maybe this isn't really, you know, Chad's, property maybe it's a community pet cemetery and uh, therefore somebody else uh, did the homicide and buried him you know behind uh, chad's house right yeah, um, yeah right you know you never know if that's his strategy where he's going but that seemed like uh you know that that one fbi agent uh, from the evidence response team was kind of you know just saying well you know no i designated this is where we dug i designated this is where we you know and so uh the next piece, I think, also uh, just uh, maybe help our viewers is you probably heard him talk about a ferrule. That is a uh, what it is. It's a device that uh, you put on a tripod and you set it up on top and it's GPS coordinated. Uh, and what it does is it literally it just spins like this. And Mike, you you know this more than anybody with maps and, and how those things work. And, and what it does is it does a 3D of the entire uh, crime scene area. So it's constantly moving and the evidence techs use that and then they'll punch it into, you know, some mapping systems, uh, some pretty big mapping systems like Esri, uh, you know, some of those uh, bigger companies that have, uh, you know, the capability to pinpoint uh, specifically where certain things happen. Just to give you an idea. So what happens is this technology is really cool. We've worked with it for a number of years but uh, here you'll see just a little pop-up, and this is an example of a, a fatal accident where this process occurred. And so like Chris was just explaining, <clears throat> this, this camera, for lack of a better, more technical term, sits on top of a tripod and it slowly spins around. And what it's do doing is, is shooting out millions of points of light, and this is called LIDAR, and LIDAR is hitting different objects and sending back a registration of where that dot's hitting. So you could then take that and it's all geographically uh, marked. So it has an X, uh, X coordinate and a Y coordinate and a Z coordinate. And, uh, and you can lay that down over the top of the map and have this really rich imagery to, to walk into a jury and say, hey, uh, here's exactly what the crime scene looked like. And um, in the cases where we look at that in three dimension, you can actually go in and measure in three dimension and move around. So really, uh, uh, yeah, that was really great of them to bring that up and, uh, and spotlight that today because it shows you the kind of bench that's sitting there in this investigation. And, you know, at, at Rexburg Police Department took a lot of hits for a lot of months. They did. But uh, for, for Cowboy Country, I'll use your term, this was not their first rodeo either, folks. They uh, were putting together a case, and they were smart enough to lean on the people that they needed to. Uh, the, the county sheriff, other law enforcement agencies, we're now seeing something that frustrated some of you, uh, that, that Chandler PD and other police departments in Kauai and other places were involved in this thing and that this really cool fibrous network of law enforcement was working. And then the ability, because they're going over state lines and moving to bring in the FBI and start to uh, to uh, take advantage of things is great. Um, hey, Chris, I, I did find an old file from something I actually worked uh, using some LIDAR. If you awesome. think it'd be interesting, let's, uh, let's, let's see it. Yeah, let's pop over to it real quick. So folks, um, this is just an investigation into a mine uh, disaster. And, and what we're doing here is just looking at an aerial image that has been uh, flown over by an airplane. And we're now collecting all of these millions of points of information, but we're doing it this time in 3D so that we can start to interact with, with this. Uh, we, can, we can go in and look real closely at the, uh, at the mine structure and you'll see these dots kind of start to draw. But um, think about this and think about the technology here. This is just 
millions of light dots of light that are going out and hitting this is picking up color variations. We're seeing the, the writing on the wall here. Um, it's, it's picking up the ability to go even inside of the facility. So we're going to just kind of go to one of the other entrances here and just dive right inside and uh, and pick up the infrastructure of that thing. Be able That's to, pretty cool. Yeah, be able to move inside the wall or outside of the wall, uh, go in further into the building if we want to go in. We can really get uh, prescriptive on this kind of thing. Uh including being able to kind of step back and say, I just want to look at all the different rooms or the chambers. So as we look at even the search warrants that were held in the backyard of Vallow's, or we look at uh, the apartments that were hit, if they ran the same kind of a technique, you would actually be able to go inside and look at every floor and floor plan in the facility and grab that. So this is so important that they uh, did this and that they teed up the fact that they have it, because that's gotta be sending a uh-oh uh, kind of a feeling.